My weird school. Fast facts. Dogs, cats, and dung beetles. Written by Dan Gutman. Pictures by Jim Pellot. Chapter Eight. Famous animals. Sure, Ami, the life-saving pigeon. It was in October of 1918, near the end of World War One. Over 500 American soldiers were trapped in France behind enemy lines. They had no food or ammunition. They were being attacked by grenades, flamethrowers, and sniper fire. They were desperate. So you know what they did? They sent out carrier pigeons with little canisters attached to their legs that had notes inside. The Germans knew that carrier pigeons were great messengers, so they tried to shoot them out of the air. Two of the pigeons were killed, but one, named Sher Ami (French for "dear friend"), made it back to the Allied headquarters, twenty-five miles away. At one point during his flight, Sher Ami was shot in the chest and fell to the ground, but. He got up and continued his journey. When he arrived at headquarters, he was covered in blood and blind in one eye, and one of his legs was hanging on by its ligaments. But he completed his mission. As a result, Allied troops were able to save the lives of 194 soldiers. Sher Ami lost his leg, but he was fitted with a wooden one. And became a national hero. When he died the next year from his wounds, his body was preserved and is displayed in the Smithsonian Institution. Bobby the Wonder Dog. In 1923, the Brazier family took a trip from Oregon to Indiana with Bobby, their two-year-old Scotch Collie. At one point, Bobby got lost. The family looked all over, but they couldn't find him. They drove back to Oregon, brokenhearted. That would have been the end of the story, but six months later, Bobby showed up at the Brazier's doorstep in Oregon. He was skinny, dirty, and weak, and his feet were worn to the bone. He had walked over twenty-five hundred miles across the United States to get home. Word got around, and Bobby came to be called Bobby the Wonder Dog. He was featured in newspaper articles, books, and movies. At a show in Portland, Oregon, four thousand people showed up to see Bobby. When he died a few years later, he was buried with honors at the Oregon Humane Society's pet cemetery in Portland. The cat that built a dam. The Grand Coulee Dam in Washington State is one of the biggest electric power-producing plants in the world. But when it was being built in 1942, the engineers ran into a problem. They couldn't figure out how to run a cable through 500 feet of a narrow, crooked drain pipe. No person could fit through it. No machine could move through it. Then one of the engineers came up with an idea. A little white cat had been visiting the construction site for the past few days. Why not have the cat pull the cable through the pipe? So that's what happened. They tied a string to the cat's tail and the cable to the string. Then they put the cat in the pipe, and the workers called to it from the other end. It made its way through the full length of the pipe. And when it came out the other side, the whole crew cheered. The only sad part of the story is that the cat's name and what happened to it afterward has been lost to history. Smokey, the World War Two dog. During World War Two, an American soldier named William Wynn found a Yorkshire Terrier puppy in a foxhole in the New Guinea jungle. It was tiny. Just four pounds and seven inches tall, Win named the female terrier Smokey and carried her in his backpack. 
For the next two years, Smokey served with Wynn in the South Pacific with the Air Force. She participated in twelve rescue missions. She survived a hundred and fifty air raids. She made it through a typhoon. Smokey even parachuted using a parachute made just for her. On at least one occasion, Smokey used her keen sense of hearing to warn soldiers of incoming fire. Smokey was also the first war therapy dog. At the end of the war, Smokey became a national celebrity. People would come to see her perform skills such as walking a tightrope while blindfolded. Smokey lived until 1957. Congo, the artistic chimp. A number of animals have been known to draw and paint pictures. The greatest animal artist of them all was Congo, a British chimpanzee. In the 1950s, he produced 400 pieces of artwork. Famous artists such as Salvador Dali and Pablo Picasso were big fans. Picasso even displayed one of Congo's paintings in his studio. Congo was a temperamental artist. If he was working on a painting and somebody took it away before it was finished, Congo would throw a fit. And when he finished a piece of art and his human handlers encouraged him to keep working on it, Congo would refuse. Congo was so popular that forty years after he died. Three of his paintings were sold at an auction for more than twenty-five thousand dollars. Punxsutawney Phil. Punxsutawney Phil is the groundhog who lives in Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania, every year just before sunrise on February second. America waits breathlessly for Phil to come out of his burrow. If he sees his shadow. He has predicted there will be six more weeks of winter weather. If Phil doesn't see his shadow, it means that spring will come early. Phil has even been threatened with a lawsuit after his prediction turned out to be wrong. It's all just silly nonsense, of course. Groundhogs can't predict the weather, but the town of Punxsutawney plays the whole thing up. With guys in top hats and tuxedos, one of them holds a scroll that announces Phil's proclamation for the year. February second is celebrated as Groundhog Day all over the United States and Canada, and it has inspired a Hollywood movie and a Broadway show. According to the Punxsutawney Groundhog Club, Phil was born in 1887, making him 123 years old. And his longevity is due to a special groundhog punch administered during the annual groundhog picnic. Believe what you want, but the average groundhog only lives about six years. Heidi the opossum. In 2010, an abandoned cross-eyed opossum from North Carolina was given to the Leipzig Zoo in Germany. Pictures of Heidi appeared online, and she became an internet sensation. She inspired a YouTube song and a line of stuffed animals, and she had more Facebook friends than German Chancellor Angela Merkel. In 2011, Heidi appeared on the Jimmy Kimmel Live TV show and predicted the winners in three Oscar categories: TV and movie animals. As soon as there were movies, there were movies with animals in them. Film was silent in its early days, which was great for dogs and horses, which don't talk anyway, right? The first animal movie star was a dog named Rover, the star of the 1905 film Rescued by Rover. It was about a baby who was rescued by Rover, so it had the perfect name. The movie cost just thirty-seven dollars to make, but it was so popular that Rover suddenly became one of the most popular dog names in the English-speaking world. Since then, there have been hundreds of animal stars in movies and TV shows. Here are a few of them, starting with dogs. 
Rin Tin Tin. An American soldier in France named Lee Duncan found this wounded German shepherd puppy during a battle in World War One. After the war, Duncan brought Rin Tin Tin home and trained him to do tricks. The dog got a movie role and ended up becoming a star in twenty-seven films. In the nineteen twenties, Rin Tin Tin was world famous. He got endorsement deals for dog food and signed his own contracts with his paw print. He was the only dog in the Los Angeles phone book. There were rumors that Rin Tin Tin got the most votes in 1929 and would have won an Oscar at the Academy Awards, but people thought it would look weird if a dog was named Best Actor. Rin Tin Tin died in 1932 and was buried in France, where he was born. Toto, she's adorable. In the 1939 film *The Wizard of Oz*, Dorothy's dog Toto was played by Terry, a female Cairn Terrier. She was owned by Carl Spitz, who ran a dog training school. Terry was a great actress. With a special talent for sitting still, whether Judy Garland was singing somewhere over the rainbow, or giant wind machines were blowing the air around to make it look like there was a tornado, Terry got paid more than the Munchkins. By the time the movie was finished, everybody called Terry Toto, so Spitz officially changed her name. Toto went on to make seven more films before she died in 1945. Lassie, Lassie, a really famous dog character, was the star of eleven movies and three TV series from 1953 to 1999. Over the years, there were lots of Lassies, even though the character was a female dog. All the dog actors were male. The first one was a collie named Pal. His babies, Lassie Jr., Spook, Baby, Meyer, and Hey Hey, all played Lassie, and so did some of their offspring. In the end, ten generations of Pal's descendants have played Lassie. At one point, another collie was used. But there was such an outcry that the producers decided only a descendant of Pal could play Lassie. Silver, did you ever hear of the Lone Ranger? Me neither. But my grandparents tell me it was a really popular TV series in the 1950s. The Lone Ranger was a mysterious guy who wore a mask. And spent his time chasing bad guys in the old west with his trusty white horse Silver and his Native American friend Tonto. When the Lone Ranger shouted out, "Hi, yo, Silver! Away!" you knew the bad guys' days were numbered. Silver was a real action hero. There were actually two white stallions that played Silver. White Cloud didn't know many tricks, but he was really good at standing around and doing nothing while the Lone Ranger and Tonto were figuring out what to do next. For the riding scenes, they would switch to the other Silver, who was originally named Tarzan's White Banner, and who was later renamed Hiyo Silver. Mister Ed. Another famous horse was Mr. Ed, the star of a 1960s TV comedy series that had the perfect name, Mr. Ed. The interesting thing about him was that he could talk. I'm not kidding. Mr. Ed was played by a horse named Bamboo Harvester. He had a stunt double named Pumpkin. Well, Mr. Ed didn't really talk. He just moved his mouth, and an actor would say his lines. They didn't have computer graphics in those days, so they couldn't just move the horse's mouth digitally. At first, 
They put a piece of nylon thread in Bamboo Harvester's mouth and pulled on it to make it look like he was talking. Ouch! After a while, Bamboo Harvester learned to move his lips when the chainer touched his hoof. Flipper. There were a lot of weird TV shows back in the nineteen sixties. Believe it or not, there was a show called Flipper about a dolphin that would save the lives of drowning people, walk on water backward, and even apprehend criminals. You'd think the criminals could just get out of the water to escape Flipper, right? Anyway, Flipper was played by five different female dolphins: Susie, Patty, Kathy, Scotty, and Squirt. A male dolphin named Clown was brought in for scenes involving the tail walk. Gentle Ben, you would think it might be dangerous to put a seven hundred pound black bear in a TV show with human actors, like. What if it got mad and decided to attack its co-stars? Well, Gentle Ben was the perfect name for the show, because Bruno the bear was really gentle. It also helped that he was declawed and his teeth were removed. Bruno was so gentle that he'd let a man put one arm in his mouth without biting it. He was also good at making facial expressions and working with children. Bruno liked to ride an airboat on the show and devour lots of Coca Colas and Tootsie Rolls. Arnold Ziffel. If you think that's weird, wait until you hear about Arnold Ziffel the pig. He was one of many pigs to star in the 1960s TV series Green Acres. Most of the pigs were female, but the original was a male named Arnold. Pigs are really smart, so the writers would have Arnold do lots of tricks and stunts. He could change channels on the TV, for example. He could also drink through a straw, play the piano, deliver newspapers, play cricket with a bat, and even carry his lunchbox to school in his mouth. Now that's funny. In one episode, Arnold was drafted into the army. The Patsy Awards. In 1968 and 1969, Arnold Ziffel won the Patsy Award, which was given out every year to the best animal actors in movies and TV. It was sort of like the Oscars, but for animals. This was no joke. In 1951, the first Patsy Awards were hosted by Ronald Reagan. That was before he became president of the United States, and after he co-starred with a chimp in a movie titled Bedtime for Bonzo. Lots of famous animals have won Patsies. Lassie Molly, who played Frances the talking mule, Shaggy from The Shaggy Dog. Spike, the dog from Old Yeller, and Flicka, the horse from My Friend Flicka. The Patsies were established by the American Humane Society. They were given out every year until 1986. Hotel for dogs. Dogs were so popular in Hollywood that they had their own hotel. Yes. From the 1930s to the 1960s, as many as 75 dog actors lived in the Hollywood Dog Training School in Los Angeles. It was on a nice 10-acre site with a large grass playground, showers, bathtubs, electric dryers, and a full kitchen where dinners were cooked for the famous guests. The Hollywood Dog Training School still exists today, and it still has overnight guests, but they don't call it a hotel. Presidential pets. The presidents of the United States have always been surrounded by animals, and that's just their advisers. Herbert Hoover had a pair of alligators. Benjamin Harrison had two opossums. Woodrow Wilson had a herd of sheep. By the way, do you know how many sheep it takes to make a sweater? Martin 
Van Buren had a pair of tiger cubs. John Quincy Adams had an alligator that lived in a bathtub in the White House's East Room. Thomas Jefferson had two grizzly bear cubs that were kept in a cage on the front lawn. In the early days of our country, Washington D.C. didn't have a dairy or milk delivery company, so it wasn't unusual to see cows grazing in front of the White House. President Taft was our last president to have his own cow. He brought Mooly Wooly with him when he became president. When she died, Taft got another cow. Her name was Pauline Wayne. She was called the Queen of the Capital Cows. By the way, do you know why the cow crossed the road? Andrew Jackson had a Paul, a parrot. He taught to swear. When Jackson died, Paul started shouting curse words and got kicked out of the funeral. When it comes to owning pets, the number one president had to be Calvin Coolidge. He might as well have had a zoo at the White House. He had, take a deep breath, twelve dogs, three canaries, a thrush, a goose, a mockingbird, two cats, two raccoons, a donkey, a bobcat, two lion cubs, a wallaby, a black bear, and a pygmy hippo named Billy. And hopefully, he had somebody to clean up after them. There's even an online presidential pet museum. Have your parents Google it if you want to find out more information about presidential pets.